Hello, today we're looking at wall frames and we're going to go through the names of the parts used in a wall frame construction. So all these names are coming from the AS1684 because we want to keep our terminology Australian standard so they're consistent across the industry. So I'm going to start with the top and bottom pieces. These are our plates, bottom and top plate obviously. Bottom plate goes on the ground and gets nailed into the floor and top plate is up there to hold up the roof structure, the rafters or the trusses. Occasionally you might have a double top plate or a top plate and a ribbon plate and a ribbon plate is just a second top plate. Vertical pieces are our studs. Now all of these studs that are marked on here they're all the same length, they're full length studs but you'll notice this one is called a jam stud and that's because it's right beside this opening. It's the same length as a common stud, in fact it's just one more common stud but the fact that it's beside the opening gives it the name of a jam stud and the reason it has a different name is because there's different rules around notching. There's certain things you can't do to a jam stud or a stud beside an opening that you can do to a common stud so that's why it has a different name. Going across in between those jam studs is the lintel and of course this is carrying all the roof load above here that is not being held up by the fact that there's studs missing within that opening. So that lintel is just going to transfer all of that roof load out to the sides of the openings where the jam studs are. These ones in here are the secondary jam studs. Now try not to get these two mixed up. The jam studs are full length. The secondary jam studs go up to the underside of the lintel and they go up in one piece and that's important because when you put your head trimmer and your sill trimmer in to form your window opening the trimmers do not go through with the secondaries cut around it the secondaries go through first they have to go one full length from lintel all the way to the bottom plate and in this drawing I've just got one jam and one secondary jam on either side of the window. You may need more. The plans will always tell you how many studs you need beside an opening. That's just a bit of an example of two studs beside the opening. And there goes our uh, sill trimmer and head trimmer in there. Just more of the same material used for the stud to form the opening. Occasionally you might find your lintel may be narrower than your wall frame so you may have to pack it out a little bit. So if you've got, for the sake of example, a 70mm wall frame but only a 35mm lintel, you may have to just put a little packer on the side to build the lintel out to a 70mm thick piece just so you can get your jack studs in. Some builders have different names for these. Some call them unders and overs but they are called jack studs according to the Australian standard terminology. This lintel construction could potentially be the other way around. You may have the lintel down here right above your window and then the jack studs above it going to the top plate and that's perfectly fine but the names will still be the same. Jack studs also have to follow the same rules when it comes to stud spacings as the rest of your common studs. Now to keep these studs from bending under the vertical weight of the roof we have our nogs or our noggings. They just go across. There's uh, restrictions on how far apart these nogs can be. Most standard houses with a 24 or 2700 wall height just need one row through there. Taller than 2700 you'd need more rows of nogs. But those regulations again are in the 1684. So let's say another wall frame has to join into this one. You may have to build a corner like this and these short bits that sit in between are called blocking and there are regulations around the size and spacing of blocking as well. So that's the main parts of a wall frame. We've got four different types of studs, commons, jams, secondary jams and jacks. We've got our lintel holding the roof load over the opening our head and sill trimmers and a lintel trimmer which isn't always needed it's only if you need to pack out a narrow lintel and that's it thank you and good luck